Hello and good morning, and today we're doing like a vlog -y video, not of just like one particular thing, but of a, an entire village. Where are we? Lavenham. Lavenham in Suffolk. Suffolk, yeah. Lavenham. Now, you're going to be impressed by this, there's some amazing things to tell you. We'll also take you into a museum, the Guild Hall. Um, you're just going to be amazed by the scenery and the history of this place and the nursery rhyme history in particular. Now, I want to start with this pub behind us. This is the Angel Hotel. Now, this is quite famous because it was owned by a very famous chef. Do you know what his name was? I can't remember. Marco Pierre yeah. White. Yeah. <laughs> he used to own this and he didn't get on with the locals, apparently. Now, as you can see behind, it's like a, a greeny colour at the moment. But when Pierre came, he painted it uh, pink, a certain pink. Now, a lot of houses here are quite colourful, you can see behind. But he painted it the wrong kind of pink, and all the locals were complaining. There's actually a colour yeah. called Suffolk <laughs> Pink. They said, that's not Suffolk Pink, you're making his village look a bit silly. So, he had to repaint it. He had to paint it back from the pink he painted, which was like mm. a whitey pink, to a proper brighty pink. And it was falling out with people around here because he said he didn't like serving common, certain common beers and ciders. He only liked to do posh ciders and traditional ales. So he wasn't getting on with people. He only lasted about a year and then he sold up and he's gone. But he's a famous fe uh, chef off television. The Angel Hotel. But that's nothing compared to the things we've still got to tell you. Let's go. So we're in the market square at the moment and behind me is uh, a, market, a market cross. There's no cross on top of it, but it's a market cross. That's, I think, 400 years old. And here you've got the Guild Hall. Now, this is a museum. I'm going to go in here and show you around it. I'll probably put that on later in the video. But that was the original Guild Hall. Um, but they've bought this and that now, and it's now all one owned by the National Trust and turned into a museum. We'll show you in there in a bit. But before that, what should we do first? Harry Potter? Yeah. Let's go do Harry Potter. Yeah. You're gonna love this. <laughs> Just on the way down to the Harry Potter thing we want to talk about, this is the Little Hall. And as you can see, absolutely beautiful. Now this is a museum as well, um, but it doesn't open until April, so we can't show you in there. But you just notice in the houses, these really quaint wooden houses. This is said to be, and I can, Im it, it's certainly up there, one of the most picturesque and best intact medieval villages in the country. It really is stunning. And the reason for that is this was one of the richest villages um, in the country. The man who like ran the village, he was the second richest man in the Earl of Britain behind the king at the time. And it made its money from, what, what was it from? Material. material. Yeah. Some kind of blue material. Yeah. Sounds boring. <laughs> it made a lot of money. The, the village was making a lot of money. And just look at the buildings. Just look at the buildings. But unfortunately, the foreigners came in. The Europeans started coming over and they were making this material a lot cheaper. So all the rich people from here left and all the money went with it. So people, like other villages and places, it, it went into a really bad recession and they couldn't afford to keep doing the houses up. So they never turned them into stone, they never got modernised. They all stayed original and just as they are now. And over the years they've like warped and got crooked. There's a little clue as to something else coming up in a bit. The, the very crooked, wooden, original, like 400 year houses, 400 year old houses. So we're just going down to the Harry Potter thing we want to show you, but here you've got the old school, the old grammar school. Now someone very famous went to this school, do you know who it was? Mm -hmm. Who was it? John Constable. John Constable, yep, you've never heard of him have you? An artist. <laughs> You're an artist, he's, he's, he's sold a paint, well they've sold one of his paintings for 22 million pounds. Wow. Yep. 
certainly in the top two pain, uh, painters in British history, apparently. I don't do art, but uh, he went to this school. Still as original as it probably was back then. Fantastic. So we're just doing the constable house. Uh, sorry, the, the old school where constable went to school. And a lady came out, she's, we're trying to get a blue pa plaque for on here, you know, we think we deserve one. And I agree, maybe there should be a blue plaque to say this is a special school. And she's also been telling us that the house we're going to next, which is to do with Harry Potter. Her sister owns Her sister it. owns it. <laughs> Ooh. If we'd have pushed her, we might have got a look inside. <laughs> it's just started raining, which is going to ruin it a little bit. But here it is. Does anyone recognise this house? You probably won't because it's been used in a film, Harry Potter. A Harry Potter film. This is the house where Harry Potter, I think his parents were killed in here. And this is where Harry Potter got his scar in this very house. How amazing. And the woman around the corner says her sister owns it. That's even more amazing. Loving it. Now, you won't recognise it from the film because they used CGI to make it look like a, an abandoned building when Harry Potter went there. It was a scene from the film... The scenes in Godric's Hollow in the film Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one and two. I think that's the last two Harry Potter books and film. Um, but yeah, that is the house. That's impressive. Now, if anywhere should have a blue plaque, it's there. But not just the Harry Potter thing, it's actually called the De Vere House and that's the name of the family of the rich man. He was the richest man in Britain apart from the king back in the day when this town was thriving because of this silly blue material stuff. Uh, and did the woman just say it's haunted? Yeah. It's haunted? Yeah. I don't believe that. Of course, look at it. Uh... Oh yeah, it must be haunted <laughs> because it's old <laughs> and it's made out of wood. It, yeah, it's definitely haunted. So there's a very famous old nursery rhyme. I'll read it to you first before we go into anything. There was a crooked man and he walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat which caught a crooked mouse and they all lived together in a little crooked house. I don't know if you've heard that before. It's a very well known nursery rhyme. Um, it's, in, it's been in the film The Conjuring 2. I don't know if you've seen that, the horror movie. Quite a scary scene. Now, it comes from the 1600s, does that song, and a lot of people believe it comes from the village of Lavish, Lavenham because of the crooked houses. All the buildings behind are crooked. In particular, this one over here. Now, everybody who talks about that nursery rhyme thinks they're talking about this house because it's very, very, very crooked. I'd love to live there. I'd love to go inside just to see if, if you're nearly falling over when you stood up. It's brilliant, it's like sandwiched in between other houses. The salmon one here, it's actually a tea room now. But there it is. See how it's leaning and just squashed between the other two houses? That looks fantastic. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence. Upon a crooked style, he bought a crooked cat, who caught a crooked mouse, and they all lived together in a little crooked house. But the crooked man was sad, and once he had a thought, why should he be crooked, when others, they were not? Everything was worthless, he heaved a great big sigh and went and found a rope, and tied it to the sky. So behind us there, Mazzy, mm -hmm. that's the co-op. See, it's all boarded up behind us. Oh, yeah. That was a ram raid. Someone ram raided it on my birthday. Yeah. 21st of December, 2017, last year, a month ago. Someone ram raided it, tried to steal the cash machine. Didn't work, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. Good. <laughs> And behind me here you can see the Swan Hotel. It's a four star. It's one of only three, I think, three or four four star places in Suffolk. Now I don't know if it's a three or four star hotel or a three or four star uh, culinary place because the restaurant's cool. I don't know. But the Swan Hotel is famous for a ghost. 
a ghost. Do you know the story about the ghost? No. Would you like me to tell you it? Yeah, of course. Uh, there was a lady who lived there, mm -hmm. uh, who worked there, a housekeeper or something, and she fell in love with a man. Right. right and they started having sex right. out of wedlock, and she got pregnant. And the man says, don't worry, don't worry, I'm going to take care of you. We're going to get married, and we're going to have this baby, and we're all going to live happily ever after. Anyway, the date comes for the wedding, and he doesn't turn up. It, it, it jilt, she's jilted. He leaves her standing at the altar, and she gets really depressed. And she's in her room one day, room 13, and she hangs herself out of depression, and she dies. And she's been seen by many people in the hotel. Um, just wandering around, being ghosty and going, Ooh, <laughs> stuff like that. So yeah, there's a ghost in there. And something else interesting, there's a guy called Mark. Let me get his name for you. Someone marks, Howard Marks. He was like one of the top drug dealers in the world, drug, but in marijuana. And he got arrested in there, but he used to have connections with the CIA, the IRA, MI5, loads of different <laughs> organisations. He was a really big drug dealer and they arrested him in there. Mazzy, <coughs> that's St Peter and St Paul and St John, St John and St Peter's <laughs> church or something like that. Yeah. Did you know, see the big tall tower there? Yeah. Did you know that's said to be the tallest tower in Britain? I did. The tallest church tower in Britain. I don't believe it for a second, yeah, it doesn't look that tall. <laughs> That's what they say. How old do you think this font is here? Century. Well, 1300s. It's so 14th century. Oh, wow. So right. Well, no, you're not. You're 100 years out, but a good guess. A good guess. Uh, we're just in the church now. What's it called? St. Peter and St. Paul's? It's absolutely stunning in here. Do you remember what we call these, Mazzy? These wooden things. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know. Screens. Rude Ooh, screen. Rude screen. Well yeah. done. <laughs> it's a rude screen. That one's from, I think, the 1400s. I think that is possibly the nicest window I've seen. Yeah. It's not really showing up on this screen, but it, on this picture, but it's like a really. Giving like a purple light off, it's beautiful. This is something I've never seen before, a baby brass. I've seen many brasses in churches. This is for somebody called um, Clopton, and he died in 1631. And that's a picture of him, if you like, wrapped up in swaddling. Um, buried underneath there, I presume. I can't read what it says on the brass, it's a bit aged. But right in the centre, right at the bottom of the church, the most prominent part of the church, that must have been a very, very important baby. Something else I forgot to tell you, by the way, about the Harry Potter house. This door, apparently, is the second most filmed and photographed door in the whole of Britain, behind 10 Downing Street, for obvious reasons. Is it open? So this is a model of Guild Hall, but it used to be three buildings. This was built in 1500, just a yeah. house. Yeah. Next to it was well, came next. Shop, yeah, I think that probably was just just a, a residence, but it was at one stage used as a pub. A uh, pub. Yeah. Oh wow. There was a Methodist chapel where the the M1 was a primitive Methodist chapel at one stage. So we're going from 1500 to yeah. maybe 1510 or something. Yeah. To 1529 when the Guild Hall was, was built. It? Yep. And we don't know what was there before. No. <laughs> um, but the National Trust have got it all now. Yep. And it's turned into this big museum. This is all the museum here. Yeah. 
Uh, this is like the ticket office and gift shop, and then you've got the tea room here. This is quite special, simply because it's so old. 1647. It says it was probably used to hold glasses. Drinking glasses or dried foods. But one thing I want to show you, Julie. Julie, this is for you because I know you want one. There's a lady in here actually spinning wool. Come on, me Martin, buy her a spinning wheel. I think me Julie would look really cool doing that. So Julie, this is a spinning wheel which you want, and I know me Martin won't buy you one because they're too expensive, but there is a solution. For £10 you can buy something like this, which is called a drop spindle. Get one of these, Julie. And there's your pile of wool. Look, I know you collect wool out of the field. You pick pieces like this up. And all you do, look, you just like attach it to it, give that a spin, and it weaves its way down. I expect to see a jumper made by you, Julie, using one of them by the end of the year. And so do I. <laughs> We're in the prison room now. And I've heard of this, the daisy wheel. I'm sure everyone else has. That is a daisy wheel. I've heard of a daisy wheel. This is from, from the 1600s and they used to carve this symbol. I don't know if this is original, I doubt it, maybe it is. They used to carve this symbol and hang it above the chimney to stop evil spirits getting down the chimney. Yeah. I don't see what that's going to do, to be honest, but uh, that's what it says. So this entire guild hall used to be a prison up till 1559, we know. Yeah, up until the mid-1700s. Up until the mid-1700s now. As you can see, it's just all wood and plaster. It used to just be plastered on top of, like, you say, like twigs and things yes. inside. So prisoners no. could, if they wanted to, just kick the way through the wall. So what they used to do is put these on the feet. And these are original. These are about 300 years old. And they'd actually tie the uh, prisoners up with these so they couldn't kick their way through the walls. And that's quite impressive. Don't try running them because the chain flails upwards and the forward coming leg gets caught in it and you'll tumble. Mm -hmm. and the cost about there. I won't have to try and run in them because, to be honest with you, I've just taken the pin out. I don't know why the prisoners didn't do this. No, they, they, the they pin were out, Then that's you can a, kick your way through. That, that's just my pin. Mm. And I just want to show you this as well. This is the Orkham, and we've shown this in a, in a video before. They used to make prisoners just do this yep. as a punishment. Just thing is here. Uh, this is a, a modern ship's hawser made of hemp. Now, Mike, it's spiky old stuff. You can get a splinter off them if you're not careful. Right. The back, and this will keep a container ship in dock. Back then, the hawsers were this size. And you've got to take them apart. The prison, it's all about splinters. The prisoners have to take it apart, un, unravel all these. Yeah. Take it's it apart each right down to its single end. one. Each single strands. Now I have heard of these before but I've never actually seen one. This is a thumb screw. Now apparently the museum of... Uh, these used to be sharp spikes. Obviously your fingers would go in the middle there, it would be tightened and it would hurt. It would really hurt. I've never seen one before but I've heard a lot about them. And these are orig original again. Oh yeah. Maybe 300 years old. Various different forms of spinning wheels here. Slavenham as a place became a very, very wealthy place all because of uh, the cloth it used to produce. It used to produce something called blue something, some kind of blue cloth, and it made the whole village extremely wealthy. Really old baby stuff. Look at that. A 1600s cot, cradle, whatever you'd call it. Look at that. Wow. Someone's gone to a lot of trouble to hand make that. I just have to make Mazzy look a bit silly at the moment. I hope she doesn't mind. But here's a menu, and on here is ox head. Now, can you remember we were talking about oxes the other night? We are talking about oxtail soup, yes. and Mazzy turned around and she says, What is an ox? Is it like a small fox? I thought it was a fox. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to throw that in. Take a look at it before I tell you what it is. That is a fire engine. That's really quite strange. 
a fire engine from 1725. Wow. What are you looking at, Mazzy? A scaredy cat. A scaredy cat. Now this is about 400 years old. You might remember I've shown you one of these before. In the, it was found in the walls of the smallest pub in Britain, in Bury St Edmunds. Uh, they found it in the walls and it's hanging behind the bar now. But here is one. Again, 400 years old, to ward off evil spirits. So this is the last place in Lavenham, 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 Lavenham. I keep saying Lavisham, I don't know why, but it's Lavenham. This is the last place in Lavenham I want to show you, and this is the best for me. It beats Harry Potter, it beats the crooked old man. I'm going to tell you something. This was written in early 1800s late 1700s, early 1800s, by a lady called, what was her name, what was her name, what was her name? Jane. Jane, Jane Taylor. Jane Taylor wrote this. It was a poem called The Star. Let me, let me tell you the poem. You might know it, you might not. <clears throat> Are you ready? Twinkle, twinkle little star. How? I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. When the blazing sun is gone, when he nothing shines upon, then you show your little lights twinkle, twinkle all the night. It goes on for five verses, but we only ever know the first one. It were only written here. It were only written here by Jane herself. Jane Taylor lived here and she wrote Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star. Now that is history. You know, you hear this nursery rhyme from the age of zero and you don't ever think someone actually wrote that, someone actually lived and wrote that down. And here it is. I'm buzzing, absolutely buzzing. Does that excite you? Yeah, I love it. I think that is the most historic part of Lavenham. Mm -hmm. I love it. Love it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so that is the village of Lavenham, guys. You need to get here. If you're ever in Suffolk, yeah. come to Lavenham because it is just a beautiful place, beautiful history. Very, very interesting. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna come back here one day. I like it a lot. So thank you for coming with us. Uh, anything else to add? No. Shall we give the place a mark out of 10? Is it worth giving it a oh, mark? Well, definitely a 10. A 10? Yeah. 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 Mm. You've got to, haven't you? It's and got two. I know, that sums bad. <laughs> for, for two nursery rhymes and Harry Potter, yeah. And the rich, second richest man underneath the king in Britain, and loads of other cool stuff, and the crooked houses, crooked all houses that, and the court getting smashed up on a ram raid on my <laughs> birthday. It just makes the place very special. Get yourselves here, 10 out of 10. We yeah. loved it. Loving them. See you next time. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. There's just a couple of things I forgot to mention while we're out on the road. Firstly, the Harry Potter film, when they were filming it. When they were coming here, they decided they wanted to, it to be a snow scene because it was set in winter and they wanted it to be snowing. So they'd set it all up to have artificial <coughs> snow coming down. They got here, it was snowing. It was snowing, so they didn't need the machines in the end. It was la literally snowing, so that's quite cool. Last but not least, and this really is the end of <laughs> Lavenham. 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 Um, love, joy. Uh, you British people will have heard of Lovejoy. Quite a few Lovejoy episodes were filmed here, including the very last one, which was called The Last Tango in, Lavish in Lavenham. <laughs> that is definitely it. All right, we're going before I make any more mistakes. See you all later. Goodbye. 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 Bye.